Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to talk about how you can test out Linux without ruining the data on your current computer. This is, in my opinion, the best way to get started with Linux is to just slowly start moving into it. Some people have had good positive experiences wiping their system, installing Linux, and off they go. But there's probably going to be a little bit of a learning curve for most people. And so this is the process that I like to take and the process that I did take. You know, I had to just wipe everything out and switch over to Linux. I just slowly moved everything to Linux uh, as I was learning the various steps. Now, the first and easiest way, go get yourself a secondary computer that's kind of cheap that you can install Linux on. So for me, I'm in State College area. I just charted on myself on down to the uh, Penn State surplus store and I bought an Omniplex computer, which is running a uh, i5 processor, a eight gigs of RAM, and it does, they actually in Penn State, they install all their own dedicated graphics cards into those machines. I paid $75 for that computer and it's actually my new work computer. <laughs> And it runs perfectly fine for web design stuff. I mean, we're not, I'm not going to do video production on it, but I'm running Linux Mint 19.3 on that computer and it runs perfectly fine. It runs every bit as well. In fact, it runs better than the old work computer that I had. And I paid 75 smackaroos for that thing. Awesome deal. Completely, totally awesome deal for a computer. And so... That is your best first option. Now, when you are looking for a spare computer for running Linux, or if you're starting to switch over to Linux, there's a few things to keep in mind. I tend to prefer AMD over Intel processors, mostly because out of the box, they tend to work a little bit better, particularly with all of these Spectre and, you know, and all these other issues that in the Intel processors, you generally have to run extra patches and it hurts the performance. I just prefer the AMD processors to it. Graphics cards, you want to be careful that NVIDIA generally does not have good support in the Linux world. So if you can, prioritize your AMD or Intel graphics generally works fairly well as also. Now, the other area you may run into issues with on Linux is a wireless card. Now, what I actually have laying around here, which usually bypasses that, is of course you can get a USB dongle wireless card. Most of these do not have any problems on Linux. So uh, what you can do is while you are troubleshooting your wireless issues, you could literally install Linux, pop one of these guys in so you have internet for the duration while you're trying to figure out how to get your onboard card working. Ubuntu distributions are excellent because they have a very simple driver utility that will install most other wireless card drivers, particularly your Broadcom ones. Those are the few issues you're going to have if you're buying a new computer. But if you are going out, maybe you're jumping on Craigslist, you're checking the surplus store, you're looking around at different computers, spend a little bit of time on the internet researching what's going to work and what's not going to work on Linux. For the most part, most hardware is going to work very well on Linux, but do a little bit of due diligence so that you ha understand. Um, HP's, I've had more issues running Linux. Dell's, Lenovo's, zero issues running Linux. I love my Dell's and my Lenovo's for Linux. Um, of course, your ThinkPads are awesome for that as well. Um, I have gotten Linux to work on some Acer's. Sometimes that was good, sometimes that was bad. However, the only one I fought with had dedicated NVIDIA graphics. And so that's probably the issue with that computer. So again, keep that in mind. Again, we got it running. It was just a little bit a little bit more difficult. Whoa, cat's like, a cat tripped. <laughs> you tripped, kitty. You tripped. All right. So uh, anyway, those are some things to keep in mind. Now, suppose you do not have the funds or the resources or the ability to find an external computer. There are a couple ways you can test out Linux on your current system without hurting your current hard drive, your current Windows build, your current whatever. Now, I did a separate video on how to use virtual machine. If you have a computer with large enough specs, so i5 processor, you know, at least dual core, maybe quad core processor, at least eight gigs of RAM, you can test out your, uh, you can get in there and you can test out your, uh, 
uh, your machines, your Linux builds on a virtual machine on a Windows computer. Now, there's a few steps that you want to do, of course, get into your BIOS. I explained all this on that individual video that I will have linked here. You got to go into your BIOS and enable virtualization inside of your BIOS. You're going to have to check how to access the BIOS menu on your individual computer. So we have a whole video on testing that on a virtual machine, so we're not going to go any further on that. The way that I prefer is by using USB hard drives. Now I could either do a flash drive like this little tiny guy that's is running, well it was running Linux Mint. Um, it was an old dead installation so we're going to reinstall something else on that. Or external hard drives. So I, I actually run my Arch computer here actually runs on an external hard drive. So that's what I'm using for all of my testing is uh, just external hard drives or things like that. Now to do this, you want to make sure that you're, again, getting into your BIOS and doing a few settings. Number one, you're going to want to disable Secure Boot. Yes, Windows is going to whine at you, but this is what you need to do to try out different Linux distributions. Now, some Linux distributions are now supporting Secure Boot, so when you decide you want to make that jump to Linux, you can get your Linux installed and re-enable Secure Boot on your Linux distribution. I personally don't see a huge deal with leaving Secure Boot turned off. It might have an impact if you're, you know, if a lot of people have access to your physical computer. In my case, I don't. I don't worry about it specifically. Now, the other so setting you're going to want to change in your BIOS is you want to change your boot order. I like setting my BIOS to boot from a USB drive first. That way, if I plug a USB drive into the computer, it boots off of the USB drive and then the hard drive. If there's a USB drive with an operating system, that boots first. That way I don't have to mess around with my boot menus and things like this. If there's no USB plugged in, it just goes to whatever the default hard drive happens to be. So make those couple changes in your system. Now some of your BIOS are going to enable you to do a legacy and an EFI scan. My new Omniplex, I either can choose UFI or I can choose legacy. I unfortunately can't do both. So whatever that happens to be worth. Um, it, that usually doesn't get in your way most of the time. Now, what I like to do here is when I'm going to be testing out the Linux distributions, you want to get a way to add the or burn the ISO image either onto a DVD drive or onto that USB drive. Etcher is a popular choice. Uh, there's a few other options out there. I think Etcher is the biggest one. So you can find Etcher for Windows. Download your Linux distribution. Use Etcher to put the uh, put the distribution onto the USB drive, and then you can boot off of that USB drive. Now, if you're going to be installing Linux to the USB drive, there's a difference between a live key where you can test it, but nothing ever gets saved or installing a drive, which is when you're actually installing the operating system to a USB drive. When I am doing that, okay, when I am doing that, I do a couple steps. Number one, I pull the original hard drive out of the computer. There's two reasons I do this. The first reason is that I do not want to risk accidentally writing the, the distribution on top of my existing operating system, okay? So I don't want to risk breaking that. So pulling that disk out of there, which is usually as easy as opening up the computer and just pulling out the, you know, pulling out the cable to it if it's a desktop. If it's a laptop, open up the computer, pull out the drive. If you got one with the drive is soldered on, eh, you don't have a choice. You're going to have to be more careful. The second reason I do this is because an operating system boots on a master boot record and then the operating system. I always want that boot partition, that master boot record on the drive with the operating system. If you are installing a typical Linux distribution and you've told it properly to install to the USB drive, the default for most Linux installers, not all, but most, is to install the grub menu, which allows you to select what operating system is being booted, it installs that menu to the first hard disk in the system. Again, some installers allow you to choose where that gets installed. Debian installer does, for example. 
that's not an option in some in installers. And so it will automatically install what's called Grub onto the first hard disk. So you can still operate the, you can still boot the computer from it using that. But if you take that USB drive and you take it to any other computer, it won't boot because there's nothing on this drive that is telling it to boot. If you remove all of the other drives except where it's going, this USB drive, this drive is going to have the boot record. That's what you want to have is the boot record always on the first, uh, whatever drive the operating system is on. That way, if I need to, I can use the boot menu, which on most computers is either F9 for a, uh, an HP computer, F12 for a Dell, a Lenovo, uh, a few computers I think have F10. One of those keys will open up a menu to, and it'll ask you, would you like to boot off of the USB drive, the first hard disk, the second hard disk, the network, the CD-ROM, and you can choose where it boots from. Okay, so that's what you want to be able to control with. So basically the steps for this is, and I realize this does sound a little bit more complicated. I have a couple videos on the channel that I kind of walk through this with actual hardware. It's, you just really can't do a solid video about how to do this. Uh, so I'll just kind of walk through that one more time. Go into BIOS, make sure that your system is booting off a USB drive and then your hard drive. Disable secure boot. Okay, step number two. Download an, or, uh, download an application like Etcher that will allow you to install a, uh, it will allow you to install a, uh, or write a .iso file onto a USB drive like this one. Download the Linux distribution, use your program, write that distribution you've downloaded onto your drive. Boot down your computer, plug this guy now into your computer, boot it up, and it should boot off of this distribution. Anything you do in here will not be saved because this is the what's called a live key. Nothing is saved to it. So you can get around, you can play with Linux, you can explore with things. If you want to install this onto another USB drive, you will need a second USB drive. Let me find number two, USB drive number two. I'll just use this one for sake of simplicity. So this contains my live key. This contains my operating system that I'm going to be installing on. I want to pull the first hard drive out of the disk so I don't ruin it and I don't write my master boot record to it. I boot off of this guy, which is my live key. I plug this guy where the operating system is going to be. I run the installer, installing it onto this key here. When the installation is done, remove this one with the live key out of the system. Keep this guy plugged into the system, boot, and now you should have a full operating system on this drive right here. At this point in time, you can now plug the hard drive back into your other computer. When you have this plugged in, it will boot on Linux. Pull this out, it will boot back to your Windows, part, uh, your Windows hard disk. That way, you're not messing anything up. You're not changing your Windows hard disk, but you can explore Linux without making any changes to your existing computer. Hopefully, you were able to follow all that. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. And uh, you can actually reach out to the channel, the Discord channel, or anything else if you have some extra help with that. So hopefully, that was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments down below.